Hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Alex with you here as usual. Thanks for stopping by. The weather outside has been pretty terrible today, so... But lucky for me, I've been able to find a little bit of time to myself to make this video. In today's video, I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the topic of getting back into chess or taking up chess for the first time. Before I get started, I did want to kind of show you guys this, not chess related, but I've been uh, kind of sort of sold on the idea of getting some of this mud water. If anybody's been, um, if anybody, anybody's been able to try this before, I'm not being sponsored by them, but I just wanted to share because maybe some, um, some other people out there have seen the commercials for mud water. Basically, it's kind of a, uh, like a cocoa powder with some spices inside of it and um, it really smells like one of those uh, one of those like yogi yogi teas that you get at like Kroger or some of your like grocery stores if you smell the box it has a really distinct spicy smell to it so at first when I opened the box I was like oh I'm not really sold on the idea of getting this but taste wise so what you do it has powder inside of it and you basically get like a like a like a tablespoon of this and you get yourself some hot water and uh, just basically uh, mix it in when i was reading up on this uh mud water thing is uh, it's supposed to be uh, like a substituent like a substitute for coffee um, they claim that it only has about a seventh uh caffeine that you would get in a regular cup of coffee um, you can drink it straight or you can be like me and add some some creamer. I personally love the Almond Joy uh, Delight here. Yeah, I usually don't add too much, but and you don't need to add a whole lot to this. Um, just stir it really well and you get yourself a nice, nice cup. Taste-wise, it, it, it kind of sort of tastes like a, I'd probably say like a watered-down version of a mocha with a little bit of a spicy kick to it. There's like black pepper in there and there's other spices in there. So overall, it doesn't taste terrible. Uh, I would recommend, um, it's a little bit on the pricey side. The bag that I just shown you guys was, uh, I think cost me about 120 plus $10 for shipping. So that is expensive. But when you drink the cup, it sort of gives you the same sort of awakened feeling that you would get from a cup of coffee, but um, it doesn't give you like the jitteriness of it. I've been drinking it for about a week and I haven't had to use my Keurig machine so far. So I pretty much just substituted this for what I usually drink as far as coffee. Um, it gives you the energy that you would expect to get from a cup of coffee. But I mean, overall, I haven't really noticed any side effects. It, it tastes pretty good overall. In fact, it probably tastes better than um, my regular Keurig. So... I, I would recommend it to anybody who wants to try something alternative to coffee. So anyways, let's go ahead and get back into it. So in today's topic, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about my personal recommendations as far as what I feel has helped me um, in getting back into chess. My channel is predominantly built around chess uh, sets, chess boards and everything. We can't ignore the fact that, you know, chess game is what it's all about, ultimately. So for those of us who are either starting chess or getting back into it, uh, my recommendation is, at the very start would be to have uh, a very good goal in mind. Like, it, and it's not just about chess. I mean, it's, it's just about that with any hobbies, you know, anything that you want to take up, really. You have, to, you have to start off with having some kind of a goal. Uh, let's imagine that you watch the Queen Gambit, and uh, after watching the Queen's Gambit, you decided, uh, I want to get myself a nice chess set, and I want to take up chess, I want to start playing, because I want to become, you know, the Grandmaster Champion of the World, uh, or, you know, at least the Grandmaster, and have the same opportunity that maybe, you know, Beth Harmon had when she was playing in all these different countries and everything. That's a great goal to have. It's a great goal to have, but it's a little bit out of most people's reach. I mean, let's face it, uh, not that many people out there are talented and have the, the, the talent and the, and the ability and, you know, the, the wiring of, the, of their brain that would constitute you being the next Beth Harmon or the next, you know, uh, Hikaru for, for, for that matter. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying that 
if we look statistically, the majority of us are kind of falling within the, the first standard deviation of what's normal. And that means that most of us, you know, are going to end up being somewhere in a certain range as far as our chess expertise, just like me, average, maybe below average. And no matter how hard we try, we're not, we're, we might get to a certain level that's going to be better than when, where we are right now if we really spend the time and, and really, you know, take, take, put, in, put in the effort. But uh, ultimately, we might peak out somewhere. And we should be okay because the area that we're going to, the, the level that we're going to peak out at is very personal to each and every one of us. And it may be quite a ways away from where our initial goal was. And that in and of itself could bring about a lot of disappointment because just like, uh, you know, I, I tend to go to the gym, I could set a goal and say I would like to be the next Mr. Olympia. It's not an attainable goal to me because no matter how much I, I work out, no matter how many hours a day I go to the gym for, uh, I will quickly reach a point where I will realize that my my mind hopes that I'm here, but my, my body is, you know, maybe here. And there's no way that I can breach that gap. Uh, you know, same with other activities. It's just, we have to be realistic. So when you set a goal that's not easily attainable, like becoming the next, uh, you know, chess champion of the world, uh, we might reach a stumbling block eventually and we're going to give up. Not only are we going to go give up, we're going to stop playing chess altogether and we're less likely to get back into it for those reasons because we're, if somebody asks us later on, like, hey, do you want to take up chess again? No, not really because I've never really reached my goal that I set my mind to and I don't think I will. It's just a disappointment. Okay. Now, with that being said, my personal preference and what I definitely recommend to a lot of people as far as, you know, taking up chess or any other activity would be to basically create a lot more tangible, a lot closer goal to you than, you know, something that's far, far and far away from us. Uh, things like this, for example, if I go to the gym and I say, hey, I would like to become the next Mr. Olympia. Okay, you know, you have to slow down. Okay, I want to go to the gym so I can get to the level where I can compete locally. Okay, buddy, you know, you still have to kind of, uh, you know, take it down a notch a little bit because even competition level, that's that's really quite far. That's, that's beyond like the 95 percentile. Uh, so then you, you get a goal that you can achieve every day. So the goal would be, um, I want to go to the gym because I want to uh, keep myself healthy and keep my energy up. And you are able to achieve that goal every day. Uh, that's the interesting part is because you could say, uh, hey, um, I've achieved it. I went to the gym. I, I spent you know, an hour at the gym and I was able to, to actually achieve my goal for the day. Uh, you can have a, a longer, bigger goal, but don't have that be your primary goal. The primary goal of going to the gym is staying, is staying healthy and trying to stay in shape the best as you can. Uh, and you're able to achieve that. And not only that, if you, if you get off the bandwagon and you stop going to the gym or you stop playing chess, you, uh, you, know, you kind of reevaluate your goal later on and you, you could say, uh, I haven't gone to the gym for a while. Uh, I'm thinking about getting back into it. So you could ask yourself, what was my goal of going to the gym? It wasn't to be Mr. Olympia. It was to keep myself healthy and in shape as best as I can. The, the first day you're going to go back, you're going to be able to attain that goal. And, and suddenly you're going to realize that, uh, you know, it's not a hard to reach goal and you could continue to reach that goal every day. Okay. Same with chess. If you think about it, no matter how long you have not been playing chess or no, no matter what, you know, if you're taking chess for the first time or if you've never taken chess before and you're thinking maybe chess is something that I want to take up, um, the goal would be to, um, I want to, you know, um, have it be a stimulating for my mind so that basically I'm exercising my mind the same way that I would exercise my body at the gym. And uh, I'm just going to keep my brain active so that my brain stays nice and healthy for you know the duration of my lifetime, however long that could be. 
for most of us, we would always, you know, want to want want something like that where where you can keep your mind active and you you know you are doing good for your mind theoretically. So that's a goal that's achieved every day, whether or not you're playing chess games or you're playing chess puzzles, uh, you know, or whether or not you're doing Sudoku or some other stuff, you know. So so that way. You're never really disappointed, even if you give up chess. You could reevaluate and say, "Look, I'm not getting back into chess to, you know, to beat uh, Hikaru in in a tournament. I'm just getting back into chess to keep my brain active." And that way, you feel better about it. Okay, so that that would be my very first suggestion. Just have a good good goal. Don't don't have a goal that's gonna be so unattainable that you know you're just gonna disappoint yourself. Um, secondly. I would probably say uh, for a lot of people who used to play chess, like getting back into chess, um, let's say that you've already had a profile online and online is where you spend the majority of your time playing. Let's say it was chess.com, lead chess, and you spend a lot of time uh, doing chess puzzles and playing games against other people. So you started to gain a certain you know rating there. One thing about uh, chess rating, especially like an online chess rating is um, I, I feel like sometimes, me included, uh, people can get too too preoccupied with the actual uh, rating number, so to speak, and they feel like that is a reflection of how they do as far as their, you know, like chess abilities, chess experience, chess skill level. Um, and even though partly that's true, the number itself becomes this sort of a, a you know, goal in and, in and of itself. It's these numbers, and people are can get so worried about the numbers themselves that they, if they see that they lost a couple of games and that number starts to fall to them, that's that's the world. It's it's not so much they don't kind of they get too too focused on those actual numbers and that happened to me. That happened to most of us who play a lot of chess. Um, the the numbers become so important and I feel like it's not the numbers that are really important in reality. It's it's just. You playing, and once again, if your goal is like mine, if you just want to keep your brain active, then those numbers wouldn't really mean anything to you. But for those who have spent a lot of time playing before, and let's say you got to a certain rating, whether it was, uh, you know, 1,200, 1,400, 16, 18, 2,000, whatever your rating was, um, you stop playing, and then you're thinking, oh boy, like if I get back into it. I'm nowhere near as good. In fact, I've dropped down to, you know, low level. And if I go back and start playing again, then that rating is going to fall. And if I see those numbers fall, I'm going to get so disappointed uh, that I would rather not even take it up. I would rather not even sign into that account. I just don't want to play a game because I, I it will re just show me right up front how much I've fallen by not playing. And that will be so disappointing to me. Once again, here's what I would have to say about that. I, I agree with you. It could be disappointing. You know, you've reached a certain level of uh, expertise and now you get back into it and those same friends that you've been playing with, they're going to say, whoa, you know, what happened, man? Your rating dropped 300 points in the last couple of days. I mean, yeah, that's disappointing. Of course. You could, uh, you know, you could tell everybody, hey, you know, uh, I just haven't been playing in a while and just trying to get back into it. Yeah, you could do that, but uh, you could also start another account. Why not? Start another account. Start one from scratch. And when they ask you, what's your chess level experience? Don't put medium. Put beginner. I mean, why not? Put beginner. They're going to, uh, you know, they're going to uh, pair you up with, with some, you know, beginner players and play that. And if you've been playing chess for a while before, but you haven't played recently, slowly you're going to start to remember the moves. Slowly you're going to start to, not necessarily the moves like how to move the pieces, but you're going to start to remember the patterns and everything and the openings and and the you know, little caveats here and there. And it's all going to start to come back, but it's going to take time. And why not play your way up? You know, that would be great. Same goes for, you know, like if, if you did a lot of puzzles, start over, start from, you know, um, kind of a beginner puzzles and then sort of move your way up. It would make you feel better. You know, if you're playing and you have some experience and things are coming back, 
you're gonna move yourself up. You're gonna you're gonna move your way up through the chess players. You're gonna enjoy playing chess, even though it's not gonna be super difficult in the beginning. You're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna like it, and it's going to give you that uh, you know that that sort of inspiration to get back into it permanently. Okay, that would be another aspect. Is you don't necessarily need to go back to that old account. Okay, um, another thing that I do want to add. Uh, for from my personal experience, and I've already talked about this before, uh, time and time again. For me, um, playing chess against other people, especially people that are a little bit lower rated, people that are like really, really lower rated, uh, playing against them is kind of fun. Sometimes, you know, they'll blunder a queen, and then sometimes they'll just like oversee some major stuff. But as you kind of start to increase the, the rating, um, you'll start to get into the zone where, where people really start to kind of care more about their rating. Maybe, you know, like if chess.com, for example, what I've noticed is that people like above 1,000, somewhere between like 1,000 and 1,500, they really start to care a, little, a lot about their rating because they want to see their rating rise. So there is um, a lot of like fierce competition and a lot of like emotions when you're playing the game. Uh, and by emotions, I mean when you're when you're playing a game and you take somebody's piece, you'll see a lot of that lashback uh, where like people really want to win aggressively. It doesn't matter to them the style or anything. They really, really want to win and get those points so they can improve, which I understand to them that's important. But uh, you start to see that and and slowly as the rating starts to kind of go above fifteen hundred, what I've noticed is, people start to become more interested in the finesse of the game and like the tactical elements and the strategic involvement, things that are a little bit, make the game a little bit prettier. They're not more, they're not likely to, to trade their pieces in the beginning of the game as quickly. They don't want to like li liquidate everything. They really want to keep the tension and, and, and really make the game a lot more, um, you know, rich and interesting. Um, but in that, you know, 1,000 to about 1,500, yeah, you do see a lot of like, you know, kind of aggressive playing styles. And for me, a lot of times I was, you know, always wanting to kind of avoid that altogether because I just, I, I don't know, you can actually feel those, those emotions where, where, where the, like the, the speed with which they'll play just to get back at you and you're just kind of like, okay, buddy. You know, I can see you're upset I took your piece, but, you know, you don't have to, uh, you know, chase me around with your queen now because you are upset. You're not making the right moves. You're just, you know. So with that being said, a lot of times puzzles is a great way to get into chess without all that emotional attachment. Okay. Uh, a puzzle generated by a computer or have been previously created by somebody um, is presented to you and if you think through it it's just like any other puzzle sudoku or whatever it is you think through it and you get it right or you don't get it right if you don't get it right you know do the next puzzle uh, whereas like when you're playing games against other people if you don't win that means you lose and then the other person wins and there's this like sometimes it comes with sort of this emotional wreckage so so to speak i you know but with puzzles it's kind of like well you were playing against the computer so if if you didn't get the puzzle right just get the next puzzle right you know and a lot of times if you don't get the puzzle right just pre press retry and eventually you'll get it right even though you lose the points but my recommendation personally is especially for those people who are just beginning to learn how to play games do as many chess puzzles as you can um, learn the intricacies, enjoy those small fragments of, uh, you know, games uh, that, you know, we call chess puzzles that uh, make it fun and make it interesting. And they are also not as involved as far as time goes because a chess puzzle might only take you a couple of minutes to solve, whereas, you know, some of the games can take you a considerably longer time period. So that's kind of my, my recommendation is, uh, once again, to recap, um, have a good goal that's achievable, number one. Um, don't set goals that are like way out there. Create goals that you can meet every day, okay? Um, and then 
uh, definitely, you know, try to put in the time. Realize that you realize that here's here's what's different about me now versus what was, uh, you know, what was different about me, uh, let's say, when I was 20 years old. When I was 20 years old, I was going to school full time and I would get into these little sort of uh, fragments in my life, these bursts where I would just either it was on a, on a winter break or summer break or whatever it was in between classes. I would get in this sort of mode where I would do as many chess games as possible, uh, do as many chess puzzles, and I would literally, within a period of a, a month or so, I would nonstop every day wake up, uh, chess, 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 you know, uh, food, chess, 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 coffee, and you know, I and I was going on and on, and you can burn yourself out quite a bit. So instead of doing that, um, it's like cramming for for a big exam. Uh, instead of doing that, just uh, set yourself some time in your day to say, okay, this is going to be the little time between 8 and 8.30 every day where I do know that I'm usually either watching TV or something. This could be the time that I could spend playing a game online or, you know, solving some chess puzzles. And you sort of create that time. And now you say now, instead of watching that TV between that little time window, I will be playing one game, one game a day, not five, not 20. I mean, unless you're playing like Blitz or three minute games or something, um, just a very small time uh, frame where you're playing that way. And you cut yourself off, you know, 830, I'm done. Let's go. But uh, it will not allow you to burn out, but you stay consistent. So you say every day, that's what I do at 830. You know, unfortunately, like, one of the things that you have to, we, we all have to be aware of is when people were playing in like 1920s maybe, um, there was not a lot of TV available. There wasn't a lot of other forms of entertainment, so to speak. And for a lot of people, chess was very much so entertainment. You know, they maybe read the newspaper while they listened to the radio or, you know, played outside or played chess or read books. You know, nowadays... It's a lot harder to say, oh, you know, every child or every adult should uh, entertain themselves by playing chess because there's just so much competition out there. We got uh, video game consoles, we got TV with all the different streaming services. We have just so much that we could entertain ourselves with. We have our cell phones. We literally lose yourself in your cell phone for hours and hours. And then uh, that, all those things will compete with that, you know, with that chess uh, game. So uh, nowadays it's it's harder. It's harder to make time for it and you really have to have a goal. Your goal is probably gonna be like for some people, for the select few, their goal might be, hey, I wanna play chess because I wanna have a good time. Because in reality, uh, you can have a good time doing other things too. So you really have to kind of evaluate your goal. And for me, like I said, because chess is not like something easy like watching TV or playing some video games. For me, um, I would say I would uh, devote 30 minutes a day at this time period or whenever I can to getting better at chess because I want to keep my mind active. And that's what I would stick to every day. Okay, and that, then I would meet that goal every day and I would be happy with that. The way your brain is wired is like the way my brain is wired is I gravitate towards certain hobbies. I gravitate towards them just basically based simply on the way that the brain functions. I gravitate towards Scrabble, even though I haven't played Scrabble in a while, I used to play Scrabble a lot. I gravitate towards Sudoku. I gravitate towards going to Goodwill. I gravitate towards playing chess, doing chess puzzles. I have a lot of different hobbies. Uh, but all of them have a, interesting similarities. Because if you think about it, um, what's different between uh, Scrabble or, or, or versus Jeopardy? You know, or like those crossword puzzles that you find where they ask you like, in 1967, who was the actress and what line did like, what's the difference between those two? The difference is some people like crossword puzzles. Some people love Jeopardy because it relies on your ability 
to recall little details, little pieces of information that you have might maybe otherwise once heard somewhere or you know you've read somewhere, and then you feel good about it. I've never been that person. Like my mom, she's used to love crossword puzzles. She would love crossword puzzles. Like I would see her doing crossword puzzles all, all the time. That relies on previous information. Chess is different. If you know how to move the pieces, chess game doesn't necessarily rely on previous information. It's all the information that you need is on the chessboard. You just have to figure it out. Same with Sudoku. It doesn't rely on you. I mean, you have to understand the concept of how to do it, but all the answers are already there for you. You just have to find them. Um, if you think about like um, uh, Scrabble, Yes, Scrabble does rely on you uh, knowing some of these words, but still, to a great extent, it's about forming patterns, words, and everything, using what you have in front of you to create things. So I would, I would probably suggest say to, to people out there who, who maybe are switching between different hobbies that ultimately don't feel bad about abandoning one hobby and starting another because in reality, that's just how your brain works. And maybe your brain does like to switch around. And maybe like your brain, let's say you, you spend some time playing chess for a couple of months and then you switch to art or music. Maybe that's how your brain works. And maybe that's, you know, you've developed a certain part of your brain and now your brain wants to take a break and develop another part of your brain. And then once it develops that other part of your brain, you might be surprised. But if you get back into chess, you might realize, whoa, you know, I, I've been doing music uh, theory or, you know, practicing music or practicing art. And now as a result, it sort of allowed my brain to develop other regions that are now facilitating or helping me understand chess better. I mean, you're not necessarily abandoning something. Your brain still continues developing or it continues working. It's just that it wants to work on different aspects of life and different aspects of, you know, your hobbies. So, so we, we should never feel bad about abandoning chess. If you, and, and another thing that's also very important to understand is that for those of us who, who spend a lot of time playing chess and we haven't played, you start to kind of guess, you know, you start to, to sort of be hesitant and you doubt yourself. You say, was I ever that much into chess if I abandoned it for such a long period of time? Maybe I was... Maybe I was never really that, that much into it. Maybe, maybe it was just a peer pressure or whatever. And I got to tell you that sometimes it is, but a lot of times that's not the case. A lot of times the reality of the situation is that we gravitate back towards chess or we gravitate back towards the activities we used to love. You know, like when you, if you were a kid and you were into, like when you were a kid, you were in a lot into video games and certain, you know, and you, you grow up and you're like, oh, I'm not going to play video games anymore because I'm, I'm supposed to be an adult and take care of everything. The reality is then you're, you know, you're, you're kind of conflicted within yourself. And maybe if you started playing those video games, at least not to the same extent of time that you did before when you were a child because you have other priorities now, you would probably realize that playing video games again is actually something that makes you happy. Same with chess. You'll realize, well, when I was a kid and I was going to school and I competed and I loved chess, but I don't have the time and I'm a grown up now, like you might actually be very pleasantly surprised that that once you get back into it, you're like, I realize why I loved it so much now. Now it just it feels good. I love playing it again, you know? That's another reason why, you know, for those of us who haven't played chess in a while and want to get back into it, that's another reason why maybe we want to give it a try again. Okay, so I, I'm not a grandmaster and all these uh, ideas that I'm giving you guys, I, I mean, it's already been told again and again, and I'm not really telling you guys anything new, but this is what I've come to realize over, over, over time and, and what has helped me to get back not only into chess, but getting back into some of the hobbies that I used to enjoy and just being happy, just being happy with yourself for, for doing what you enjoy doing. Anyways, so I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I know it was a little bit longer than I, I anticipated on making it, but be sure to stay tuned. I want to make my next video, hopefully, where I, I do want to get back into comparing that uh, best chess set ever that I did a video on uh, a little while ago it, to compare it to some of the other plastic chess pieces that I have. So be, be sure to stay tuned for that video, and hopefully we can, we can get that made 
soon. Until then, hopefully everybody's gonna have a, a good weekend, a good upcoming week. I wish everybody to stay safe and, uh, you know, try to get back into chess or try to play more chess. And uh, be sure to like this video. If you like the video, be sure to subscribe as usual. Uh, and uh, we are almost at a thousand subscribers, so that's pretty awesome. Um, anyways, I'll see you guys next time, okay? Bye-bye.